over here at this uh, large kidney and of course we talked about that on our previous uh, YouTube but I want to draw your attention here once again to the pyramids so these are the pyramids right here and then these are these little white dots are the glomeruli um, the tubes of course represent the various tubes that we're going to be talking about in just a few minutes um, but notice that this section here is the same as this structure here so we've sort of enlarged the structure for you so now let's since we have this enlarged structure let's go to what we refer to as the nephron the nephron is a combination of the renal corpuscle which is the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule now if we can switch over here real quick this is the glomerulus the glomerulus is essentially a collective of fenestrated capillaries that are the blood filters the um, epithelial cells that are responsible for making these capillaries are also covered by specialized filtering cells called podocytes and that's what these white structures are so in effect the fluid coming from the blood is going to be water it's going to be nutrients it's going to be ions and all that kind of filters into this region here which is the capsular space of the glomerular capsule or it's also known as the Bowman's capsule. That fluid then is going to drain into a tube and so we're going to look at that right here. Alright, so this is what we saw, right, this is the glomerulus, that is the glomerular capsule and it drains into a tube called the proximal convoluted tubule. In the proximal convoluted tubule we're going to be reabsorbing um, the nutrients that we just lost, it's a glucose and amino acids. We're also going to absorb uh, the lion's share of the water that we've lost. If we didn't reabsorb most of the water in the kidney actually, we'd be urinating about 45 gallons of water a day. So that's not a good thing. So it's a good thing that we have the glomerulus and the nephron, which is a sort, essentially this entire structure here, is the functional and structural unit of the kidney. So the proximal convoluted tubule is all about reabsorption. And if we take a look here at this model once again, you can see how fuzzy the inside of that tube is. That represents the microvilli of these cuboidal cells that make the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, back to our big model. So the proximal convoluted tubule gives rise to the loop of Henle. And you can appreciate how the loop of Henle drops down from the renal cortex down in the medulla, the renal medulla is this nice salty area. As it drops down into the salty medulla, uh, it winds up losing water to the medulla. Now this water is ultimately recollected in the vasa recta, which is a capillary field that surrounds the loop of Henle. Um, as we get down here though and start going up, we're no longer losing water, but we're losing salt, so sodium chloride um, uh, essentially is the source of the salt, the salty renal medulla. So we go up and up and up and up and up through the medulla into the cortex again and we wind up going into another tube called the distal convoluted tubule. Notice that the distal convoluted tubule passes very close to the glomerulus. Uh, it is here where we have regulatory mechanisms for the blood pressure within the glomerulus and I'll get to that in just a moment. But anyway, this is referred to as the distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule uh, is responsible for mineral balance. So we decide in this region whether we're going to save sodium at, at the expense of potassium or vice versa. And uh, also um, we're going to try to expel extra hydrogens if we can. So off we go into this next drainage region which is the collecting duct collecting duct drops all the way down into the medulla and ultimately at the base of the pyramid at the base of the pyramid if we go back to here you can see that we're in the minor calyx and so the fluid which is now urine is going to be draining then into the minor calyx ultimately from the calyxes then into the pelvis and then into your urethra. Okay let's go back here one more time and take a look at this tube. This tube is the distal convoluted tubule. These larger cells here, 
kind of in a row. I think the artist is trying to represent the macula densa. And the ma macula densa is a regulatory structure for determining the blood flow uh, through the kidney, hence the blood flush pressure of the kidney.